One of the most common things that people bring up to disprove the existence of God is the problem of evil. Now for those of you who don't know, the problem of evil says that if God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good, he should know about evil before it happens, he should have the power to prevent it, and if he's good, he should want to prevent that evil, yet evil exists. So either that God is limited, or that God simply doesn't exist. Now I've heard many so-called intellectuals actually quote the problem of evil, and I'm always surprised by it because it is such a brittle argument. Number one, it doesn't even account for all the variables, right? So God is not just three things, God is many things. God is also all wise, and God is also extremely just. These are things that inherently resolve the problem of evil. Whether we understand that wisdom or that justice or not, the fact that it is present would make the problem of evil null and void. But maybe you want a more detailed explanation, so let's just get into it. The first thing I would like to point out is that the problem of evil actually does have a very big problem. And that problem is that we are assuming that we know what a good God would want. But we can recognize that there is a difference in intellect here. God is all-knowing, and we are limited in our knowledge. God is all-wise and we are limited in our wisdom. And because there is such a gap in intellect, we simply cannot make that assumption. It's like the person who plays chess for the first time, and then they go watch a grandmaster play chess, and they don't understand any of his moves. Why? Because they are simply not at the same level. Now the second point is a point from design. Depending on what function you want something to serve, you would give it different structures to follow that. A simple example is that if you are engineering a desk, there are many different options for how to make a desk. There are standing desks that are supposed to change in height, they are designed differently. There are desks that are designed to have maximum storage space, so they have cabinets, drawers, and shelves. There are other desks that are designed to conceal wires, other desks that are designed to be economical and cheap, and each one of them is made differently. And so what about the universe? Perhaps its function will give us some insight onto the structures that we see present. And in Islam, we are explicitly told the function of this existence. God has said that he has created death and life so that he could test who is the best in deeds. So this life is a test. And when we look at a test, there are right answers and there are wrong answers. There are easy problems and there are difficult problems. And so too is true with life. The good times where you have money, health, and safety, those are tests. And the bad times where there's poverty, famine, and hunger, those are also a test. And like all tests, eventually the test will be graded. And every individual will be judged based on the tests that they were given and the capacity that they had within themselves to pass those tests. And that goes into the concept of the day of judgment. So we spent a little bit of time understanding God's wisdom, and now we must understand God's justice. That God's justice is so absolute that it does not only extend to the human being, but also to all of creation as a whole. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him told us that on the day of judgment, there will be two rams that come in front of God and they will complain. One of them will say, Oh God, you made it in our nature to headbutt each other and his horns were harder than mine. So I want justice. So God will recreate these rams and he will flip their horns and you'll have them headbutt again, so that the subjective pain that they experienced was switched exactly, and it will cancel out, and they will return to the dust. Why? Because animals are not consequential beings. They are not beings of free will and morality. So their existence will actually end there. And in fact, it's said that the disbelievers will see this, and they will wish that they were like the animals. They will say, oh, I, if only I was dust, because they know that they will not have a good end, and that they have to face the consequences of the actions that they did. We also hear from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that not a single ounce of suffering will pass, except that it will benefit that person some way. The Prophet said that not a thorn will prick a person, except that their sins will be removed from them, or they will be raised in rank on the hereafter. So, on the Day of Judgment, God resolves everything. All evil ended. So much so, that even the disbeliever, the one who is going to hell, knows for certain that he was done justice with, and knows that he deserves what's coming to him. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, you yourself will be sufficient as an accountant over your own fate. That you will know 
and you will have no argument against yourself. So it's very interesting when atheists try to use the problem of evil to eliminate God, when God himself is the solution to the problem of evil. And without God, you end up in circumstances like Hitler, for example, who killed seven million people in the most gruesome and agonizing way possible, and yet he didn't suffer even an ounce of that. And there is not a single creation in this world who could give him back what he was dishing out, except God Almighty, who understands the subjective pain and experience of every single human being, and the one who has the power to dish it back out to those who deserve it. So I'll leave you guys with one last thing from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he said, how wondrous is the matter of the believer, that everything that happens to them is good. If they are in a good state, they are grateful, and if they are in a bad state, they are patient, and both of these things raise their rank in the hereafter. And so everything that they go through ultimately benefits them and becomes good for them. So good and evil in this construct are the result of the choices that we make, not the result of circumstances that are beyond our control. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst the people who do good choices that benefit us in this life and in the hereafter. Let me know if you have any reflections, questions, or comments in the comments section down below, and I will try to get back to them as soon as possible. Thank you guys for watching. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.